All right. Hey, welcome to Oasis Online, everybody, and thank you for uh, being with us today. Even though we're apart physically, we're together in spirit, and so thank you for joining us. Um, as I was praying about what the Lord wanted to sh uh, speak about this morning and what he wanted to convey from his heart, uh, I was reflecting on the year and how the things have progressed in 2020. 2020 and this whole decade is a promising decade full of good things from the Lord, um, which I'll mention here in a little bit. But uh, here we are at the end of March. We're three full months into 2020 already. A quarter of the year is already done, uh, which is nuts to think about. But here we are. And uh, right now, everything, that's, everything that everybody's talking about the one thing that the media and the news are talking about all the time, whether you get news feed or newspaper or um, are watching TV or whatever, is just the coronavirus. It's, look at this, what's happening over here. Look at the statistics of this over here. We'll look at how this is doing over here in this country or in this city, you know, and uh, this is what you need to do and this is what you don't need to do. And, uh, uh, and the coronavirus is like, like this. It's just everywhere, everywhere we look, it's just coronavirus, coronavirus. And, and uh, that's a very different uh, state than what we started this year in. If we back up uh, to, our, to earlier in this year, we'll be able to see better the big picture of what God has been doing and, and where he's been taking us. The, the year started with us talking about as a church that, the, that we're in a time of refinement where the Lord is changing us and growing us. Uh, and, you know, the Lord's always doing that. But uh, there's times when he gives a specific emphasis to it. And that's what we're in right now. And this coronavirus thing is just something that another thing that God's using, not that he caused it, but that he's using it uh, to refine refine us, refine the big overall church in America, in the world, and is bringing unity out of it, bringing faith out of it, bringing victory out of it. So it's, it's an exciting time. We started 2020 also saying that, there, that the 2020 vision, the vision for not just for this year, but for this decade is be fam. It, it has two meanings, be family as a church, but also it's an acronym, be fruitful and multiply. So we are focusing our lives on fruitfulness, and, and that comes out of just our connection with Jesus, uh, according to John chapter 15. And then, and then the multiplying. We're multiplying the life of God in us into other people. We're pouring our lives out into other people, and we're making that a focus. We're not just... Uh, hoping it happens here or there. We're being intentional about multiplying our lives. And so we're, we are in the midst of that. In this epidemic, pandemic, this is the, one of the best times for us to multiply the life of God in us. Because the, the soil that's receiving this, the seed of his love, the, the goodness of God, the, that soil is so receptive right now. It's so open. It wants the goodness. It needs the good news uh, from God. Also a reminder that in September, we entered the Hebrew year of 5780. And in each decade, there's a, it's a, it corresponds to the Hebrew alphabet. But each uh, part of the Hebrew alphabet, it, it's a pictorial language. Uh, and that, that alphabet uh, has a specific meaning to each letter. The the letter of the A of 5780 of the of the decade of the 5780s is a de decade of declaration. It's it, the letter is an open letter like a mouth and there's a declaration going out in 5780. So that's that's the time we're in. We're to declare what the father is saying into the earth to see it come to pass. So that's exciting. Now, also been, has, that has been released in this year 2020 is that there's a new move of God that's coming 
There's a billion soul harvest that is beginning, and there's a new revival unleashed. So what we don't want to do is in the midst of the storm that's happening, the coronavirus storm, where, where the, the wind is blowing in, our, howling in our ears, coronavirus, and the, and the rain is blowing in our face, and the lightning and thunder is gone, coronavirus everywhere, it's going crazy, it's everywhere. What we don't want to do is lose sight of what God is saying, because there's a voice over the wind. There's a voice over the wind that's coming and it's speaking and the Lord is speaking to you and to me about what he's doing in this time. Okay, I, uh, I want to read to you Isaiah chapter 40. Um, and you can turn there if you'd like. Isaiah. Let me see if I can get it. I forgot my uh, other Bible at home. That has it, so hold on. Isaiah 40, and we'll just start reading in verse 1. I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation um, because I like some of the things it brings out, but. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 and 2. And now listen to this, because this is a word to the people of God. This is a word for now. Your God says to you, comfort, comfort my people with gentle, compassionate words. Speak tenderly from the heart to revive those in Jerusalem, to revive those in the city of God. And proclaim that their warfare is over. Her debt of sin is paid for and she will not be treated as guilty. Prophesy to her that she has received from the hand of the Lord twice as many blessings as all her sins. That's a good word right there. This is so the Lord is speaking to us comfort, comfort, calm, peace. Rest. Uh, some have said that this time with the, um, the quarantining, the uh, stay-at-home orders that um, parts of our nation are under is uh, like a forced Sabbath rest. And uh, that's what the Lord's saying. Comfort, rest, calm. In the midst of this storm, look at me. Be at rest. This is a rest time for you comfort to you and so that's more of an understanding of the big picture we need to zoom out from the coronavirus and all the stuff that's going on zoom out from it because that's just in the midst of our lifetimes that's just going to be a blink in, of the eye it's going to be a drop in the bucket right now it seems like the world is over as we know it it's apocalyptic but it's not this is going to pass on the other side of it we're going to see all the things that God has set up released because it's not like he didn't know this was coming. He knew it was coming and he had, he had so many preparations in place for this to, ha to, to uh, put into play when this began. And so we, we actually have, uh, I, I want to say it right, but we have a, a, a major reason to be excited for this time. Because the coronavirus is not what is, it's grabbing the headlines. But in the kingdom, it's just being used by God. <laughs> so we get to see all that's going to happen through this. Now, to see the big picture of God, though, to understand what he's doing, you have to have eyes of faith. You have to look not with the physical eyes. You have to look with the eyes of your heart. Okay? Uh, turn in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And we're going to look at verse 13 there. Uh, and we'll work through this to get to verse 18 where we're really talking about how to look and see the big picture. How to look with eyes of faith. Okay. So in verse 13, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13, it says, We have the same spirit of faith 
that is described in the scriptures when it said, first I believed, then I spoke in faith. So we also first believe and then we speak in faith. In this time, that's, and remember, we're in 5780, the decadent declaration. When you first believe, then you speak it in faith, not in doubt and not in fear. You speak it in faith, faith being that trust in God, that trust in his goodness. And so when we speak, we're speaking out of the faith. We're speaking into the atmosphere. We're speaking into the circumstances because God has put within us in Christ, the power to see the coronavirus and anything else that comes against this planet or against the people of God to see it reversed. I'm believing that in April, we're going to see the coronavirus begin diminishing in the U.S. Now there's other reports and studies and whatever saying, oh, it's not going to be until, you know, 2021. But Um, I believe that we're going to see a change because of promises from the Lord, prophetic words, and also just the character of God, because he's good. So here we are, verse, now let's keep reading verse 14. We do this, we speak in faith because we are convinced that he who raised Jesus, the Father, will raise us up with him, and together we will all be brought into his presence. Yes, all things work for your enrichment, so that more of God's marvelous grace will spread to more and more people, resulting in an even greater increase of praise to God, bringing him even more glory. So what this is saying is, that the Lord is working all things for your enrichment. Romans 8 says that he's working all things for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. This is saying the same thing. He's working all these things for your good, for your enrichment, and here's, what, here's the purpose of it. So that more of God's grace is going to spread to more and more people. Well, that's the time we're in. The grace of God is on the church. We're the ones that are... we. As we speak in faith, then we're gonna, we'll see how God works all things for our enrichment, how he works all things for our good, and people are going to see it too. And they're going to just be like, wow, we need what you have. And it's going to bring praise to God, and it's going to bring glory to him. Okay, let's keep reading in verse 16. So no wonder we don't give up. We don't give up because God wins. That's what this is saying. He works all things for good. We win every time. We're made for victory. So no wonder we don't give up. For even though our outer person gradually wears out, it grows old and, you know, that happens. It says this, though, our inner being is renewed every single day. If you're sick right now with the virus, take this scripture and apply it right now. Your inner being is renewed every single day. And the Lord is in the business of taking what's on the inside and bringing it outward. Okay? We view our slight, short-lived troubles in the light of eternity. Isn't that saying, hey, back up. Zoom out on this. Look at this trouble from the light of eternity. See it for what it is. It's not a giant. It's not unbeatable. It is an ant underneath the feet of Jesus. It it must bow to his knee, or or bow its knees to his name. It must bow to him. So it says, see all this in light of eternity. We see our difficulties as the substance that produces for us an eternal weighty glory far beyond all comparison. So this difficulty this trouble is actually something that god uses to increase his glory in us (laughs) we don't we just don't lose we win every time and and then it goes says this and this is really where i want to hone in on in verse 18 because we don't focus our attention on what is seen but on what is unseen For what is seen is temporary, but the unseen realm is eternal. 
So the challenge here is to switch the focus from looking at everything going on to what is unseen, to begin seeing what God is doing, to look at what you can't see. That's exactly what this is saying. Okay, focus your attention on what is unseen. Look at what is unseen. Okay, see what God is doing. And that's what will help us to get that big picture, to understand the flow of everything the Lord's doing. And it's going to just kick out and displace the fear that might be in us, the the worry, the anxiety, the stress. It's going to displace all of it. It can't. Those things can't remain when we're looking at God. It just can't. We have to look into the unseen, and that stuff's just going to flow right out of us. The junk is going to flow right out of us that comes from looking at the circumstances. Now, you know, you know this next verse I'm going to share, and I, but I want to apply it in this understanding, in the understanding of looking at the unseen, of, of looking at what you can't see. Okay, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, we have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. Okay, so we've not been given a spirit of fear, power, love, sound mind. Sound mind means that your thoughts are not all crazy, that they're, that you have the mind of Christ, that you're seeing things as God does, you're thinking like he does. Okay, he's saying, in other words, that the spirit that you've received, it's not a spirit of fear. It's a spirit of boldness. Love is bold. The power of God is bold. And a sound mind moves us to boldness. The Lord is calling his church and calling all of us to rise up in boldness right now, to not shrink back at the sight of this what looks seems like a roaring virus, but instead to rise up and put it in its place. Rise up in the boldness of the Holy Spirit. And uh, what I heard the Lord say was, be bold and be fam. Okay? Be bold and be fam. So we're going to be bold moving forward, but we're also going to be family as we do it, and we're going to have the focus of being fruitful and multiplying as we move in our boldness to see the, the life of God multiplied. Okay, and now how do we multiply the life of God right now in this setting? Well, pray. Pray. Rebuke this virus. Rebuke the enemy. You know, pray for people who are sick with it. Pray for healthcare workers. Pray over our nation. Pray over the government. Just pray. Uh, this is a great time to, uh, for the, that the Lord is using to return the church to its place as a governing assembly and through intercession make rulings and decrees that we're receiving from heaven and see them released on the earth. Hallelujah. This is also... Another way to multiply the life of God in you is by serving others. You know, you have neighbors who are in the same boat as you, might be, uh, have, might be under stay-at-home orders, um, and though you might not be able to have as much contact with them as you normally would, you can still reach out to them, you know, call them, uh, you know, knock on their door and stand six feet away, whatever you need to do, but um, just ask do you need anything? You know, do, is there anything I can help you with? A ask family members, ask friends, co-workers that you're connected with on Facebook or wherever. But just serve others. Ask people what they need, if they need anything. You know, some people may just need, they might be lonely right now. They just would like to talk. <laughs> you know, just serve others. And then uh, multiply the life of God also just by sharing Jesus, you know. Tell them about how you're encouraged about this time, how you're like, man, I'm just excited to see what God is going to do through this. You know, put on display the opposite spirit of fear. Put on display the spirit of faith. Put on display the spirit of love. Put on display that boldness that you're not intimidated by this. You are, you're, you're moving forward, um, you know, and you're still doing it with wisdom 
and in honor, and you're still honoring the authorities of the land, but you are not, uh, you're not letting fear direct you. Put that on display. People will see it. They'll know. I want to share with you a, uh, a testimony that I received this week uh, from a church in Southern California. The pastor of the church uh, sent out a, a uh, prayer for protection and a prayer for healing, all based on uh, the Bible and sharing some verses and stuff out of the Bible. And, you know, told, his, told the people in the church, hey, pray Pray this over your life, over your family, your friends, your coworkers, whoever. Just pray it over everybody. And <clears throat> one of the people in the church uh, had a c- close friend who contracted coronavirus. And uh, they sent the healing prayer over to their friend, and this is what they said. What, uh, what the member of the church said, said, I sent the healing prayer to a close friend with coronavirus, And when she read it, she began to weep. She couldn't bear the pain in her lungs. After she read it, she knelt down in pain, cried, and asked God for forgiveness. This morning, when she woke up, she had no pain at all. She had others praying for her. Nothing worked but the word of God. So there is a testimony right there of somebody getting healed from the coronavirus because God's greater than the coronavirus. He healed somebody and that person gave their life to him, asked for forgiveness and gave their life to him. This morning, as or I'm used to the morning, I guess this afternoon, uh, as we um, close up here and pray, I want to give out an invitation for anybody watching to give your life to Jesus Christ. To line up your life with his life. Okay? But also, if you're watching and, you know, you're already walking with the Lord, to pray for a grace to be released on your life, to see the big picture, to step into boldness, And then together, we're going to also pray and make the declarations about uh, the coronavirus. And we're going to stand in the victory that Jesus has given us. Okay, so let's pray and respond as the Lord leads you. So Lord Jesus, thank you for the power of God that's in us and the love of God that's in us, that we don't have to respond to the storm going on around us and the fear that it's uh, wreaking havoc on in in our nation, in the world. Lord, we are not a people of fear. We are, I just speak it over yourself right now. I am not a person of fear. That is not who I am. I am a person of boldness, a person of love, a person of the power of God, and I'm a person with a sound mind. I have the mind of Christ. I am not under this virus. It is under me because I am in Christ. And Lord, thank you right now for a grace released over us to to keep the big picture in mind, to see into the unseen, to look at what we can't see to see how you see and not get drawn into the fear, not get drawn into the worry and the stress and all that stuff, the financial worries, not get drawn into that because you are great and you are faithful and you are good and you will do good and be good to us, Lord, because you work for our enrichment. You work for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. So we declare your promises over our lives. We will be strong and we have the victory already in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. That is who I am. That is who you are. You are a victorious person made for victory. It's in your DNA 
to be a victorious person because you took on the DNA of Jesus. And if you're watching right now and you haven't yet given your life to Jesus Christ and you want to step into the victory that he offers you, then just pray this right now. Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. Where up to this point I have done my own thing, I have led my own life the way I saw fit, I want to give you the rest of my life. Forgive me for going my own ways. And fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your life. Fill me with your love. If you made that decision today, then I encourage you to message our church family. Let let us know. We'd like to mail you some resources that will help you begin your walk with the Lord. And then tell others, other believers, you know, and get and look for a church wherever you live that will help you to grow in your relationship with God. But Lord, we thank you for your power and the power of your cross and of your resurrection. That brings us victory after victory after victory for the rest of our lives, Lord. The battle is already won. It was won 2,000 years ago on the cross. And now we just stand in that victory. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, so thank you for being with us online. Thank you for keeping your heart open to what the Lord is speaking, what the Lord is doing, getting, keeping that big picture in perspective. Please reach out if there's anything that our church family can do to help you uh, in your relationship with the Lord or to just to help you with what's going on in your life right now. We're here for you, and you don't have to be alone. You don't have to go through this by yourself. Know that you're loved. Know that you are being prayed for on a regular basis, and uh, just go enjoy the rest of this day. Enjoy this season, this time where you get to rest, you get to grow closer to the Lord, you get to come more into an alignment with the destiny that God has on your life. This is a great time. So just keep following along that track because that's where the Lord's taking us. Be fam. All right, blessings on you. We'll see you later.